What is going on, loyal listeners? First off, happy new year. Uh, I know by the time you probably listen to this, probably a month or maybe even two months into the new year of 2021. Uh, but I hope you've all got a phenomenal, great, uh, phenomenal group of ideas of what you're going to do to go kick 2020 right in the rear end and uh, have, have, have a year to remember as 2020 was a year to remember, but 90% of 2020, the year to remember was bad. Uh, it was bad in a lot of ends for myself, but I had, I had probably one of my favorite 20, uh, favorite years so far in the insurance business. And you might think, Mitch, you've been in the insurance business for three years, but you're correct. But I learned a lot. And it's from guys like this next guest that I've got. It's guys like, you know, Jason Cassie, the, the, the best host that you hear um, on this agency intelligence podcast. And, and, and it's, it's other agents like yourselves that listen to these podcasts and give us input and give the industry uh, what it needs to make the change and, and to adjust and evolve uh, as the insurance industry is never going away. And, and hopefully you stay in the insurance business and hopefully we can make it as fun as we can for you. So first off, we appreciate you listening to the Agency Intelligence Podcast. And, you know, I'm looking forward to 2021 and I can't wait for you to hear the next couple of guests I've got, starting with this guy right here. Uh, this guy comes to us all the way from Florida. I was just telling, telling Ryan that he's sitting in beautiful, sunny, Florida, and I'm looking out out in beautiful Knightstown, Indiana, of nothing but cornfields, dry, uh, dead grass, and uh, pigs across the street. So, uh, hope you guys are all having a phenomenal start to your days, your weeks, your months, and the 2021 year. Uh, glad to uh, announce this next guest, Mr. Ryan Mahoney from Goosehead Insurance down in Florida. Ryan, thanks for joining the show, my man. Yeah, thank you, Mitch, for having me, man. Good to be here, that's for sure. So whereabouts, at, whereabouts in uh, Florida are you from? And kind of give us a, a scenery of, of what, what you're off, looking out the window, what you see every single day. Probably palm so, trees and sunshine. Yeah, that's that's what it is, man. And it's a little chilly today at 60, which I know that's uh, contextual to where you live, right? Um, we're actually in like the uh, Sarasota, Bradenton area. Um, we, we actually just moved back down here in end of October. So um, what, actually it was pretty easy for us because there was no work hiccups or challenges or hurdles, anything like that. The, our main office was, is in Charlotte. My business partner's still up there. We were writing from the Carolinas, Georgia, Florida to begin with. So this is kind of where we wanted to call home and get back to the warmer weather and the beach. So we made the move in October and here we sit in the sunshine state, man. Man, man, I, I can tell you right now, I'm jealous. I, I wish I could see 90 degrees or even 70 degrees or hell, even maybe even 60 degrees at this point in time. Uh, but it, it is what it is. And, you know, we'll, we'll have that time of sunshine here soon. It gives me a place to go vacation and, and go venture out and see, see the ocean a little bit. Um, I, I guess kind of to get started, Ryan, uh, our, our loyal listeners love love knowing, first off, before we get dive into kind of your career and, and the topic of content of what we're going to talk about today. Um, that they want to know who it is that that they're listening to behind the camera or who they are listening to behind the microphone. And, and if you guys have not heard of Ryan Mahoney or, or Goosehead Insurance, they're doing amazing things in all aspects of, of insurance, from, from even writing the insurance to uh, teaching their current agents about the insurance game and, and why it's so important uh, to, to keep to creating amazing content pieces, whether it's for their customers, for their agents, or for their community. Uh, they're doing it at scale at a phenomenal, phenomenal point of the insurance industry's uh, time frame right now. And, and we'll get into the content piece a little bit more and why, why it's so important and why it's a key factor to, to Mr. Mahoney's uh, daily, daily routine and weekly routine to, to make sure they're staying on the top of their game and separating themselves from not just other agents, but other agencies um, across the state of Florida and in the, in, in the country. So I guess kind of to get started here before we jump into your career and you bring us up to speed, uh, some questions that the, the loyal listeners love hearing. And, and, and when, when I was on the show with Cass back in December of, of 2020, uh, when he asked me these questions, I was kind of blindsided by it. I didn't listen to any episodes prior to that because I wanted to I wanted it to kind of be an authentic authentic podcast and just come from my heart and my head and my ears and my mouth right at the same time. Uh, but the first question our loyal listeners love to hear and love to ask is, are you an iPhone or an Android user? iPhone. iPhone for life. 
That's, that's sure. how I am too. I, I, Cass is an Android guy, and, and I, a, lot, a lot of those Android guys are, are, are a little little quirky, uh, but we won't go into that. But is I went, there a certain I reason why Android I went Android for, or, or iPhone? I went Android for eight months, man, and then everybody laughed at me because I wanted to try something new, and uh, and then I went back to to iPhone about eight months after. So yeah, d- for sure, iPhone. <laughs> for me, it's a compatibility thing. It's just you know, the way I have mm-hmm. my, my computer systems, my iPads like that, just it's so nice when something links well together. And I'm sure Android and all those all those other funky carriers have have that stuff. But iPhone, iPhone ride or die for me and you, myself, brother. Speaking of the iPhone, so if you've got the iPhone, what's the last app you've downloaded? If you have to look, you uh, might have to look to dude, see- it was- it was actually Clubhouse. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. I have not hopped onto that, but I saw Bradley Flowers with the Insurance Guys podcast, Portal Insurance, say, who's on Clubhouse? Let's connect. I don't know what it is. Fill me in real quick. So, I, and I don't. What's funny about that is I saw a good friend of mine in North Carolina who um, does like social media stuff up there. I saw, I woke up in the morning, she had posted, anybody have an invite for Clubhouse? I kind of Googled it. And then as soon as Bradley Twittered, what it was like that afternoon or whatever it was, hey, here it is on Clubhouse. And I'm like, oh, okay, download it. Um, she was looking for an invite. And then I asked Bradley about having an invite and I just logged in, went into some queue. And then a buddy of mine in the mortgage industry, like, approved it or something somehow um but i don't know it's a lot of audio um i haven't dove into it mitch so i think the premise of it is is that it's the one thing i was listening to was like it was actually a content like adobe editing thing and this guy was in there asking questions um and people were giving them feedback like right away but it's not all written it's all in audio so it's, so, so it's another, like, like another social media platform, just a way for people to connect and interact and, and, and help one another, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like you go into this room and everybody, you, you can speak in it and raise your hand or whatever, but I haven't dug. Other than that, that's about all I know from it. It's pretty proud. I'm going to have to download it. Once we get off here, I promise you I'll download it and try to connect it. And, and uh, you loyal listeners, if, you, uh, if, if you've got Clubhouse or you've downloaded Clubhouse, uh, Give us a give us some context on it. We'd love to we'd love to hear more about it and if you're utilizing it and uh, if so how. So fuck that's the first one. Clubhouse. I'll I'll have to get that one. For sure. Next thing, this is a great question. I love this. This is probably one of my favorite questions that that Cass has asked and the agency intelligence podcast ask is do you love to win or do you hate to lose? Oh, that is a good one, man. Um <laughs> it's it's I, I came up with one I, hell of an answer. I probably love to win, man, you know, but the that's probably equal uh, equal amount because I I hate to lose too, but I I guess right now I'd say I'd love to win, and uh, maybe because on the forefront of my mind is we put something out there that you know when I switched to Goosehead that I forgot what it was like to win, um, and that feels good. So I'll I'll go with that. I like to win. Good answer, especially going into 2021. We got we got to win. We want to win the year. We want to win everything we're doing. I'm competitive as all get out, and I love to win, and, and a lot of different reasons. But we can get into that. We can get into that later on here in the episode. Two things that bring us in this life that we run into, and a lot of the times it brings us into situations of where we're at currently in our careers, life, relationships, whatever it is. Uh, but in your point of view, and in your shoes at Goosehead Insurance, uh, there's two things. Luck and skill. What would you say one of those two things has gotten you in a position uh, to be so successful uh, in, in your insurance career? Uh, luck and skill. Probably, I mean, I guess it's skill. I, I'd almost go more into activity and action than anything. Um, you know, I think I'd take skill over luck, I guess. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. But for us, I mean, we're we're very intentional about what we do on a daily basis, whether that's content or prospecting or anything. So, um, you know, yeah, I think, I think skill comes as, as time goes on with, with experience and all that stuff. 
I would have to say that same thing. And I, I, I literally told this to Cass when I was on his, his, his show back in December was uh, it was luck that got me with the agency I was with and the timing that it was because I had no intentions of being in the insurance business. And I think that's where a lot of these loyal listeners um, find themselves at, or even, even every agent across the United States, I think is probably 90% of the agents in this, in the in industry, maybe that might be stretching it. Let's just say 80% of the agents in this industry probably had no intentions or plans of getting in the insurance business. So right. one way or the other, some type of uh, action or activity has led them in their shoes to put them there. But then in return, like you said, as time goes on skill, your skill that you develop and evolve over time, um, or it might be that one piece of the personality trait that you've got that makes your skill set be so successful uh, in your career. And for me, that's what it is, the communication, the ADHD and everything that's helped me. Uh, yeah, that, that the skill part of it, that's helped me be successful, but for sure, luck, uh, luck being in the, in the agency. So I love that question. Um, and, and I can tell from the beginning that you're a go-getter. So I, I knew that skill set was, was going to be that, that correct answer for you. So, uh, <laughs> good stuff and keep, keep up the, keep up the hard work there. Thanks. So you, you talk about the skill aspect of it. You guys have just recently take, took a move back down to Florida. You've bounced around a couple of times. Uh, for our loyal listeners to help to help them understand a little bit more about Ryan Mahoney uh, and Goosehead Insurance, take us back as far as you want and bring us up to speed of where you're at in your career now, so we can understand your career path and uh, what's gotten you to Goosehead. Yeah, so I started my insurance career back in 2005 in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. I was with um, I worked for a State Farm agent down there for eight and a half years. We literally went from you know, a mediocre Palm Beach agency to one of the best in the state and then one of the best in the whole country and um, among state farm agencies. And uh, we grew a pretty large book of business there. They weren't putting any new agents on state farm agents at the time. So a lot of folks were going to the Carolinas. So that's where I went up there. I actually opened up my State Farm office in Charlotte for had that for two and a half years. And then um, that's where I met my business partner, Blake. We met, he had a State Farm agency in Virginia. And uh, about, I don't know, well, February, yeah, of uh, 2017, Goose had reached out to us. We had actually heard about him about six to eight months prior to that from a good friend of ours in Illinois. Um, he actually launched Illinois and then 2017, we opened up our agency in the Carolinas. I think we were about the fifth state to launch for Goosehead at that time. Um, and uh, yeah, just kind of went the independent route after 11 years of being with State Farm and we have not looked back, that's for sure. Now, now you talk State Farm and, and captive. It was kind of funny. Uh, ben Zimmer, who who I'm going to have on the show as well. Ben Zimmer's out of Valparaiso, Indiana. It's kind of a small world. How uh, I didn't know who Ben Zimmer was, and, and you know, kind of started looking, for, you know, what agents I wanted to have on the show and that could add value to the other agents uh, that are listening to these uh, that are listening to the show for our loyal listeners here. And uh, Ben and I were talking about because he was saying thing was in the, with with the captive agency or with a captive uh, company uh, with Indiana Farmers and you know got out of it and he said it was the best thing he's ever done. W what would you say? I mean, I, I know we've probably got all types of agents listening to this from captive to going independent. What would you say the biggest, maybe the biggest obstacle that you had to overcome, but in return? What makes it so rewarding and makes it so different and, 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 and happy? It makes you happier being in the independent route. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess one of the, you know, the big, the big fears is you have, you know, multiple companies and, and carrier guidelines as opposed to one. Right. Um, I, I'd say one of the biggest benefits that, that we've seen is, is just being able to be in a spot to find the best option for people, you know? And then the, the other thing is our, our referral partners took off once we went independent with our mortgage brokers and realtors, just because, you know, if you're not able to solve a problem on one risk for them, 
it, you're, you're kind of fighting an uphill battle at that point too. So being able to kind of find a solution for everything has been a big win for us. Um, our retention rate, just because we can reshop people now, you know, is, is significantly higher um, than it was, you know, I, I've always, I, it was very frustrating in the, the captive world just because I, I have a lot, a lot of good relationships with my clients and, you know, I have four girls, man. So if, if I could save a thousand bucks somewhere, I'm in my budget, like that's a lot of money for us, you know? So I couldn't in good conscience, tell them not to take it. If it's still the good coverage, good company, good price, you know? So I, it got frustrating to lose business um, when I had the solid relationships in force and it was just about price at that point over anything. And, you know, I, look, we, we talk about it all the time. It's not just price and you can't sell on price, but I, I do believe it's, you have to have a properly priced product in the long run. It's like, you know, my, my kids ask me that all the time. And I'm like, well, if, Disney is expensive, right? But if they were to charge a thousand bucks a day versus 150 or whatever, how many people are going to go? Like they have to have a properly priced product for the value they're bringing. So I've just found in the independent world, we're able to do that a little bit better. And, and I would agree um, with the, with the three years of insurance experience I've got, I, I've noticed and I've straight, straight independent, I've right out of, right out of college, but went the independent agency route. So I've not experienced a captive, uh, a, a captive career and, and I will not, I mean, I just won't. And uh, one, it's because of all the other independent agencies out there, other independent agents out there, like the flowers of the world, like the Cassis, the David Crothers, um, the Ryan Hanley's right. who are constantly helping other independent agents. If you think that you're competing against another independent agency down or other independent agent down the road, maybe a little bit. But if you're not trying to help one another out, first off, there's enough, there's enough insurance going around that we can all share and be, be completely content and make a good living out of. But the, the biggest thing that I take away on the independent agent, the independent route as an agent is what I feel like when you're in a captive position and coming from someone who's never been in the captive position. So Ryan, please correct me if I'm wrong here, but coming from the captive position, there's are a lot more guidelines, I think, as far as the branding goes of what you're able to put out, what you're not, you have to have approval to put, put specific pieces of content out. They need to have this. Uh, if you're, you know, Indian farmers, you know, stop knocking on wood. That needs to be the tagline in there. And I get it. But at that point in time, that customer's buying a specific product from that, that, that captive company, not that agent 90% of the time. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Right. But while trying to say market yourself or brand yourself as an agent or as an agency or agency owner, whatever it could potentially be, you've got a little bit more freedom to, to, to go with that. And that, that's where I've noticed with you. And that's what I love on the piece of content that you're creating. And I want you to get into that and dive into that for, for all, all of our loyal listeners out there. Go look up Ryan Mahoney, a Goosehead Insurance, right now, Instagram, Facebook, and look at the stuff and content they're creating daily. They're creating amazing pieces of content. It's clear of who it's branded to. It's clear of what their message is. And it's clear who the people, who the faces are behind their agency and, and their brand. You guys, you guys don't have to get that approval. Correct. You guys can get, you guys can be able to create that piece of content. Some comes to your mind, you're able to create that piece of content the way you want it to look and the way you want it to sound, who you want it, who you want to hear it. So yeah. for, for you and going to context here for us, that's probably a pretty, pretty good determining factor of the difference on the captive side compared to the independent side of what you're available to do content wise on social media or even marketing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's probably one of the things that, that gets overlooked and, and pushed to the back of my mind now. Um, but at a hundred percent, Mitch, like we were able to put out, you know, everything from our interviews to, I mean, at, at one point, like I, I put out a, um, I filmed a video when they were building a Publix down the road from my office. And I basically was like, are you a Publix or Harris Teeter person? 
And because it had like their emblem or, you know, sign in the back, like I had to take that down. Um, I did like a Snapchat of me and the, the Starbucks barista kind of that, that symbol on like coffee day or something, man. And, and that had to get taken down because it was somebody else's. So it, 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 whatever that is, right. I think it's, you know, it goes back to, um, I think one of the things I like that Gary V mentioned is he's like, be the mayor of your town. And I was like, well, this is what's going on in my town. Like they're building a Publix in the Carolinas. Like people are either the most of them are Harris Teeter people. We're Publix people. Cause we came from Florida. So like, let's put it out there and see what everybody's got, you know? Um, so, so yeah, those kind of things I think are fun, but, but I also think it, we, we mentioned it before Mitch is that, we take the long-term approach on content and, you know, we're, I think a lot more people are going to have fun, like in the comments section, talking about why they're a Publix fan over Harris Teeter and vice versa, than they will figure it out if they have a thousand or 2%, you know, deductible or whatever. It's just not as exciting. Right. So, um, and it also just shows who we are. So that's, yeah, that's been very, very, very nice, man. We don't, get any pushback on our content or anything we're able to to uh to just show people who we are you know yeah and i, and I like that and i to be honest with you i came that just kind of hit me as we were talking here as far as the, the difference between the captive and the, the the independent route and there's nothing against either or i'm you know I'm, I'm i'm just thinking independent agents agencies route here right now and if you're if you're an independent agent and and, and you're listening to this loyal listeners and you're not on the con, forefront of the content game and creating content right now i'm just going to tell you right now you're you're a little bit behind the game and the the longer you wait the more people that are going to be on the more people that are going to be creating that not a bad thing because we all come across those stumps and those those you know those roadblocks that make us not be able to do that and it all goes back to time management Okay. And I, I've say this all the time. You're not going to get it done nine to five. So you've got to find other avenues and other ways to get things done. Because a lot of the times, a lot of people listening to this may not be an agency owner. They might be that young punk producer like myself who gets that bad rap for themselves and, and is out there just busting down doors left and right. But one thing that clicked that you just said to me was you guys are playing that long, uh, you're, you're invested into the long game of the social media and the content creation. Go in a little bit of detail of what you mean by that to help our loyal listeners better understand your guys' philosophy behind short-term and the long-term game of creating content for social? I, I think one of the false impressions that people get out there, and I, I find this when I talk to other goosehead agents that are trying to up their content game, is that the question, not just them, but a, a lot of agents, the question is, do you get leads off of it? It's, do you get leads off of it? And it's like, I, yes, I'm sure we do but that's not like where my mindset is. I know it's going to come, you know, I've connected with loan officers that, that see it, um, realtors that see it. But even for example, like we, when we started hiring last year, um, one of the girls we hired that started last month just said that she reached out, spoke to a loan officer and was like, Oh, I know those guys. I see their videos, you know? So I don't know which video they're seeing Mitch, but I think, you know, each video, if we can create a little bit of value around whatever um, is going on in the industry or us, and then just keep pumping those out, then people are going to see something eventually. That, that's why I think like every, it, it's kind of pointless to go for the viral video, right? Because you just don't know what it's going to be, but it's over time of consistently putting that stuff out that someone goes, Oh, I see their videos. You know, I have a good friend of mine who's a, who's a big real estate agent. He runs a big team in, in the Charlotte Lake Norman area. And he's like, you, when I'm on point and putting out a lot, he's like, I'll watch maybe one out of five videos, but I see everything going by. So I think that's where it's, it's challenging to, to kind of where I think people can get stuck and go, well, I want every loan officer to see this one, you know, or this one. And it just, it may not happen, but if you consistently go out and do it over time, you just, you become recognizable. And like, I love it, man, when I'm out in, well, when you used to be out in the community and people go, I feel like I know you because of your videos. 
And you're like, yes. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Heck yeah, That's you it. do. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. And, and I think what you're trying to, what, what you're trying to get at is one, the consistency. And, and we say it all the time, but what Ryan's doing and, and what, what a lot of those, the, the people out there creating content are doing and, and what I try to try to tell myself every single day, if I'm creating a piece whether it's a community piece, whether it's a piece about myself, my family, or it's a piece about um, insurance or, or, or something I just did with a customer or, you know, I'm out on a job site at a construction site talking to a customer, whatever it might be. What you're doing is you're just continuously building that authority. And we talk about all the time, build your authority, build your authority, build your authority, because people want to buy insurance from you. People want to buy insurance from Ryan Mahoney. People want to buy insurance from Mitch Gibson because of what I'm doing, right? The pandemic, we can't get out and see a lot of people. We can't get out to those networking events at, at, at the local chamber of commerce or whatever it might be, the big inch, big eye conventions or, or whatever, whatever it is that floats your boat. But social media is a way for us to do that and creating pieces of content is a way to do that. Not only is it a way for us to do that, but it's helping you become more creative as an individual, as a professional. I have learned so much within the last year about myself and it became so creative. And I will share on social, go look at my Instagram and I promise you within the last probably month, you'll see a post that I have created from something I did. And I'll put you a side-by-side of I did two years ago, or heck, even three years ago compared to now. And it looks head over heels better. But I bet in three more years down the road, I'll look at that piece I did, you know, three years down the road and then five years down the road. And that's going to look a heck of a lot better. I'm going to think that looks bad. You are making yourself a more of a professional. Okay, you're helping yourself become more creative. At first, when I sat down with Bradley Flowers and Bradley told me to start my local Inside Hancock County podcast to highlight local businesses, I would not have thought I'd be in the situation that I am now. And I didn't think I'd be able to do half the stuff from editing using Adobe to editing my audio via Audacity to uploading it to Spotify, to uploading it to Google Play, to uploading it to, to uh, Apple Podcasts. I didn't think I could do it. Now it's like second nature, guys. I'm not saying it happens right then and right that second. It's going to take time for it to evolve and for it to become great. And at that point in time, you're still going to not, not going to think it's great. I've still got lots to learn, but it's helped me become more creative. And when I'm driving down the road and an idea comes to my head that, oh, that might be make a great piece of content. And I lock it in my brain. So when I get out of the car to make it, things like that will come. It, it's going to happen, but you've got to start somewhere. And if you're not starting now, you're going to lose. OK, maybe you do write million, two million dollars worth of business a year and you don't do any social media. Congratulations. I'm happy as heck for you. I am very happy for you. You know, tip my hat to you. Greatness. Hoo ha. Let's go, you know, pop champagne and celebrate. <laughs> but not everybody's like that. Not everybody's like that. Like he like like Ryan just said, and like Gary V's told, you know, said, uh, be the mayor of your town, be the mayor of your town. You're not going to be the mayor of your town if no one's no one knows who you are. They just know the name of the agency that you work at. OK, and build that authority, build that build that brand for yourself so people know who they're buying the insurance from. And I guarantee you in Ryan's community. People don't identify just Ryan with goose said they were no, they, they they associate Ryan with Ryan and who he is as a person, who his family is. He's proud. He's a proud father of these four, four beautiful girls. One thing that I remember, I've watched videos of Ryan, but I can tell you the most memorable piece of content I've seen of Ryan so far in the last month was a picture of his Jeep and the Jeep that his daughter got for Christmas. The little, the little <laughs> uh, four wheel, you know, toy right. Jeep that they get and it's sitting side by side. Yeah. That's memorable stuff, people. That's memorable stuff that people are going to see. So the people in your community consistently see you creating stuff. It might, and I think the golden rule is it's going to take five to seven or maybe five to 10 times for someone to see your logo for them to remember that. Mm -hmm. Five to 10 times for them to see your face for them to remember that. Okay. Well, here's, a lot of times we all get caught. We all get caught in the concept of just scrolling through, right? So when they right. see it consistently and they're seeing your consistent brand put out there, whatever it could be, that's going to make it a lot easier for you, for people to identify who you are and what you do. What were you yeah, going to say something there for you? We, um, we found a lot of that in, in my neighborhood and in, in North Carolina. I mean, I just recently moved two months ago, but um, our client referrals are, are pretty, pretty high in relation to Goosehead as a company where we do pretty well at that. And 
it was funny because someone reached out and they're like, do you ask everyone? Do you ask everyone? And I was like, actually, no, we're, we're pretty awful about asking for referrals. Um, but it caused me to kind of go in and look where these people were coming from. And a lot of them obviously in my neighborhood, but we put out video all around that. And, and then it hit me too, because I was leaving the pool one day and this lady in the parking lot just goes, Hey, you're that insurance guy, right? And I was like, yeah, that's me. She's like, I need to call you for my stuff. And I was like, well, there it is. Like the word spreads, you see, you know, you put out enough content around the community. I mean, we interview people. It's not a lot of insurance stuff. Um, but I interviewed two of my neighbors and, and put, um, you know, that stuff out there. They had a, um, one of them had a small business with bows and all that stuff for little girls. So that's an easy one for me. You know, we can relate to that. So I think it's just bringing value in the community and constantly being out there and, and yeah, people do get, get to know you. And, uh, it's, it's, it's just real life at that point, Mitch, you know? And it's fun. I mean, I think it's so much fun. Uh, and, you know, the young producers or, or people listening to this episode who might not be an agency owner and you feel like you can't control your, you got, you, you can't control your time. Okay. When I say control your time, I mean, when you're in the office from nine to five or whatever your office hours are, you know, you, your bosses are, should have that expectation that you're there doing insurance work. Okay. And some might have bosses or some might have principal owners that uh, might not believe in what they're, you know, believe in social media because, you know, a lot of agency principals um, have been in business for 30 years plus. Okay. And might not be on the forefront of seeing the digital content because they've been stuck in that old way of insurance and they're doing it a certain way for so long, which is, which is perfect. Well, there's fine. no immediate, there's no immediate return. Correct. And that's it. It's like, I don't, if you're not going to sell a piece of insurance off of that social media content, then don't do it yeah. or you're not going to do that. But guys, it works over time. And if, if it's, if your boss is not fine with you doing it there in nine to five, either one or two things, sit down and ask him, uh, explain to him with passion and authority of why you think it's a great idea. Give examples, give examples, show him, yeah. show him exam. Just like back in college or high school where you had a, you had a research project to do, you had to come up with resources to show why it backed up your, your specific uh, argument and why, um, why you thought that was the specific piece or why that was the correct way um, to do that come up well, with those never, creative never, ways yeah never mind the fact that like it's it's a personal branding at that point it's completely personal branding look how many people jump around i mean i was with you know state farm for 11 years and um now goose said that's one of the other things that people ask you know is no you know you we were the fifth people to launch so the fear was well nobody's heard of Goosehead. you're like yeah but i'm a good dude like <laughs> yeah, business, <I'm... laughs> my, my business partner, Blake, he's a good guy, man. Like we're likable people, you know? So that's our brand. Like that's us. So, you know, I think there's a, there's a, you know, don't put a whole lot of weight into the sign behind you or under, you know, above you in a lot of this, it, or even that agency owner, you know, like it, I'm, I'm not uh oblivious to the fact that if like Jake, who's on my team now, like people do business with Jake because he's Jake. Yep. If he were to leave and, and go to, to state farm, I'm sure we'd have clients leave because they like him and, you know, vice versa. So even as a, you know, the owner of the agency, like that's just people do business with the people, man, not so much the company behind you, you know, so I would encourage you if, if you are starting out and you do have an agency owner that heck, I, I've heard from drastic rules, man, where you have to put your cell phone away kind of a thing. And it's like, well, hash out the work, learn it. Um, as soon as you leave that office, document it and freaking pump it out and tell them what you learned, what you like, what you don't. And it, it, the other cool thing that, that you said is you you can put a side by side of what you did two to three years ago. And I think that's, that is what's really, really awesome, man. I mean, I, I go back to my stuff and it's actually sometimes very fun and rewarding to look at what I did three, three and a half years ago. Dude, the, today I was just looking at one of when I literally met with Goosehead for the first time in Texas. And I was like, this is the most phenomenal opportunity for me. 
I'm so pumped to be here, blah, blah, blah. And I recorded that like walking down some street going to get a bite to eat from the hotel before I flew home, you know? Um, so that's cool stuff too. You, you really kind of see your journey at that point too, which that in itself is enough to, to encourage me to, to document more than even I do. Yeah. And, and I think on my end, on, on my side, all these loyal listeners who might not know, this might be the second or third episode they've heard me on the agency intelligence podcast, but loyal listeners, I mean, you might sit there and think in the back of your head, oh, I'm listening to Mitch Gibson, this 25 year old, try to tell us what we should do. Some of guns only been in the business for three years, but guys, let me tell you, I've only been in the business for three years, but the last year has been absolutely amazing by just listening and taking advice from someone who I didn't really know much from. I didn't know who Bradley Flowers was. I didn't know who Jason Cass was. But the advice they give me is it worked. So I have nothing better to do but to share that with you guys to help you guys learn and to help you guys understand it works. Ryan sees it work. It's working. He's not the only one that you're yeah. going to hear that I have on the guest that's, that's, that's showing you that it works. And it does. And you can't think that you're going to sell insurance on the social. If you think you're going to sell insurance, you've got it completely wrong. It helps yeah. you. It helps you sell and build that authority. And that's what we're about. We're trying to build that authority, build that personal brand, build yourself so people know who they're buying the insurance from. I guarantee you more people now in the last year know who I am and what I do, not just insurance, know what I do outside of insurance than they do from that other agent on the road, that captive agency, that other insurance agency. Yeah. I guarantee it. Yeah. And if you just create just a little bit, little bit, I guarantee you're doing more than any other agent in your town or in your county. Believe it or not, true probably, right? I, I, absolutely, man. It's, absolutely, uh, absolutely. It's one of those things too, where everybody knows like that I'm a huge music guy, like between Fish and Tool and then my kids and, and Disney, you know, that's, that in itself is enough for people to spark a conversation with me. And, and that's all put out through what I do, you know? So it's, it goes back to people going like, Oh, I feel like I know you. It's a, it's a very weird feeling when you meet someone and they feel like they know you and you're kind of like trying to navigate a conversation when you've never really met them before. But it's, it's really cool because how many times have you done that Mitch where you're like, you know, Man, I feel like I know. I feel like I knew Bradley way before I started. Like, like last year, me and him started communicating on like text message and phone call type level. But I felt like I knew him, you know, right off the bat. See, the thing is, too, there's a difference between when, a, a good vibe when someone feels like they know you before they even meet you because of how they how they perceive you. Um, before I go into what I'm getting ready to say, uh, I said it, I think maybe a couple episodes ago, but there's two ways that there's two, there's two ways people are going to identify your brand. The one you choose and the one that society chooses for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when someone sees you on one platform being away, a you know, a certain personality or speaking a certain truth or language, and then they see in person, you're not who they perceived you to be on social. That's not a good thing. Not a good thing. And everybody I've talked to, you know, whether it's Bradley or Jason Cass, they're 100% the same person that they are and how they interact on Facebook's Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is. It's because they're being authentic. If you're not yourself, yeah. if you're not yourself, it's, you're not, you're not going to win. And, and that's the thing about me. Like I'm trying to be myself. I want people to see who I am daily. And yep. so are you. And that's, that's what makes it easier for you building that authority and seeing someone in your community or your town that says, Hey, Mitch, I'm, I, feel, I haven't met you before, but I feel like I know you because of, because of seeing your, your podcast and listening to it and seeing it on channel nine over on nine star TV. Great. Yep. Let's you start talking to them. You're already one step into the door. You, you, you're already I, a step ahead of somebody else. I think that that being authentic is a huge, huge thing, man. You know, and it's funny because I'm not a suit and tie guy. And nope. we started um, we started doing the best part of our week last year. And of course, we're working from home. It's summertime in Charlotte and I'm wearing tank tops and I'm just filming like best part of the week, best part of the week. And I don't think twice about it. Right. I'm just filming it. We put it out there. It's a fun little positive thing that we've we've started to do. And um, one of my loan officers at Movement who does like 700 plus deals a year. Um, she's from Florida too, but now is in Charlotte. 
but I was talking to her over the break and she's like, oh, I'm so happy for you guys. And you're in good tank top weather down there in Florida. And like, I, I obviously haven't visited her Mitch or anything or showed up at her office in a tank top, but like, that's the video. She knows where I like the warmer weather and all that. And that's where that came from. And I thought, oh, that's cool. Like she's never commented or said so much on, on those maybe likes them and, and stuff, but that's essentially who we are, what we're doing, working from the house and, you know, trying to do what we can through COVID at that point and keep it positive. But just, yeah, little things like that, man, I think go a long ways to, to just don't be afraid to be you because you can't mess that up. Right. 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 You can't mess that up. And don't, don't, and then also don't think you're going to be perfect by, if you're, I mean, don't think you're going to be yeah. perfect yet by any means. And, and I told Cass when, when he asked me to, to guest host the show, I go, um, I actually started talking about editing it and whatnot. I said, do I need to edit this before I send it to you or not? And he says, no, our team will edit. I said, just to let you know, I said, I'm going to start to finish the way it comes out, the way it comes out. And, and that's true. Cause that's what makes my episode the best, but that's what makes me, I'm, I'm, I'm getting more out of this than you guys probably are loyal listeners. Okay. So, so when, when you think that a lot of the stuff that we create or that anybody creates is, is takes so long to edit. And that's where I'm getting my next question with you, Ryan, before I, uh, before I let you go here is it, be your genuine self. We all, we're all human. We've seen in 2020, we all make mistakes. The world's, the world's crazy. Someone wants to judge you based off of how bad or how good a video looks flipping the middle finger and keep walking because that's not someone you want to be around. And that's not someone you might not want to do business with. You want people just like people are trying to buy insurance from your, yourself. They're buying insurance because they like you as a person. Don't do business with someone. And, and it's the truth. If someone wants to bring you a, a $15,000, you know, Bob policy to, to quote, and, and they don't respect the person that you are, or if you're on the phone with them and you happen to drop a, you know, an F word or, you know, say the S word or whatever it might be. And they, they say, Oh, I don't want to do business with you. Well, that, that's okay. That might not be someone you want to do business with. Cause I'm going to talk to you the way that I, the way that I talk to my daily, daily self, because I want to be yeah. Mitch Gibson every day of my life. I'm not saying don't be professional. For every, and, yeah. yeah. I, I always think for every person who's going to walk away from you because of how you are, there's one that's going to walk towards you. Yep. And the better off your life will probably yeah. be the better off your life will probably exactly. Be. Now, real quick yeah, on the content 100%. side, so I was talking, talking about the editing, okay, on the editing side. Do you have any apps or any, you know, bit of advice as far as video editing goes? Um, I know there's agents out there that, that send their content to someone to edit for them. Um, they edit themselves. I know I've got a couple of things that I'll share with, with, our, with our listeners as well that I use. Because there's there's a lot there's a lot of platforms a lot of things out there um, that that our loyal listeners when we say create content they may not know where to get started or they may not think I don't want to spend yeah. thirty dollars a month for Adobe Premiere Pro or I don't want to spend whatever it is do you have anything that these loyal listeners can take away with them that they might be able to I download think, I think even starting like I I find I use my iPhone a heck of a lot more than I use my camera these days so don't be shy about you know, using that, don't feel like you got to go out and get something fancy. Um, app wise, I think I use InShot the most. Um, that's on iPhone. That's, that's pretty, uh, even just for Instagram, like if I snap something on my phone and it formats it correctly for me. So I like, I like that. Um, I had, so in up until last year, I had Adobe um, for what, three years maybe? And my, so my experience with Adobe, it's fantastic. But what ended up happening to me is as I would, if I was not on Adobe regularly, I forgot how to use it. So, um, you know, I, I would, at one point I was like getting good. I was, I could get the words underneath the video with the bar and do all this cool stuff. And like I, my creative started getting better and then we got slammed at work and then I wasn't on it as much. Maybe I wasn't interviewing or editing content as much. And then it just, I fell out of it, which reverted me back to just doing like quick things on the phone again, because I realized I wasn't putting stuff out 
because I wasn't even interviewing people, Mitch, because I would like forecast, oh God, I got to get into Adobe and I forgot how to use it. You said, yeah. So I had to change that, right? But now um, I have a content guy that, you know, we do the interview and then he'll put it together and edit it and, and send us a bunch of files and stuff on it too. So that, that's been a nice investment for me because it's made me a lot more proactive in creating the content again at a better scale. So, um, and, and dude, quite frankly, we were in a position financially to do right. that, um, that helped too. So kind of a long answer to that. I, I used Adobe for a while. I think InShot works fantastic for the quick stuff. And that's what got me back to doing more content and pushing more of it out. Good. And I, I, I've never used InShot. And I'll share a little, I think I said it on uh, Insurance Town over with uh, Heath Sharon, the mayor. And I use Video Shop. Uh, some of those platforms as video editors plug their, uh, if you don't pay for the whatever it is, a month subscription or the yearly subscription, they put their InShot logo or their Video Shop uh, brand on the bottom right-hand corner or top right-hand corner uh, to, to get you to purchase that. Because obviously we want to we wanna make sure we're branding our personal self or our, our company or our, or our agency. Um, fun fact, so Video Shop, I think, is for iPhone and Android. This, this might be a piece of a helpful, helpful hint for you, Ryan. Um, but Video Shop, I downloaded that, and it's probably a year and a half, two years ago. And what I learned with Video Shop, for the first six seconds of Video Shop, so say I just uploaded a video and I added my photo or my, my HRM insurance logo or my Mitch Gibson branded logo on there or podcast, whatever it was. The first six seconds of that video, when you save it to your phone, has the Video Shop logo on the top right-hand corner. After those six seconds, it's completely gone. So what I got in the habit was, was have had like a six to eight second video always saved in my phone. So I would, before I dropped that, say, or uh, exported that uh, video from video shop to my phone, is I'd put that six to eight second video on the front end of the video before I would even do anything with it, save it, go to my iPhone, the photos, click on the video and you can trim it on the iPhone. So I'd trim that, that six to eight second video that I threw on the front end of it, video shop logo is gone. I now have a piece of branded content for myself. I told Heath this too. I said, Heath, this video shop hears about this. That I'm, I, I just, I just ruined it for everybody. <laughs> I just ruined it for everybody. But I think fun, I have video shop too. Now that you say that, but I think I use in shop a little bit more, but no, it's, there's and a lot of those platforms too have hidden features that you can, you know, put logos in or add a time bar, uh, but you're right. Time management's huge. But if you guys have any questions on, on, on those or even some apps, feel free to reach out to Ryan and I. Um, uh, we'd be more than happy to kind of give you some insight on, on how to make sure that you're keeping the time management portion of your days a little bit thinner, uh, especially on the creating content side as we are here at Right, right Insurance. So fun, fun Adobe's fact there. A, Adobe's a beast, man. That thing is amazing, you know, but that that's a legit program that if you're uh, if you're starting, I'd encourage you just to start putting out content in the most simplistic Simple way story. you can and then get into it. Because I've I spent many nights and weekends the first year we opened our Goosehead agency dialing in Adobe and it's it's worth it. But it's it's fun to your point, too, Mitch. Like I, I like doing it and um, it was good. It's just, you know, we're we're in a little bit different spot now. And I actually found someone that like edits kind of how I do, like with a little bit more on the creative side, you know, so that took probably a year to, to find the right fit there too. Like I went through the path of maybe getting interns or talking to a couple kids at high school and, um, and getting them to do it and just couldn't, nothing clicked, man. Like, you know, so probably over the last eight, eight months or so now, um, mostly everything we we put out has is done by him so it just is a better fit and allows me to focus in on just pumping or putting content or pushing content over to him rather than kind of drawing back and putting more work on myself and feeling overburdened by it yeah and i can tell you if you're really good with adobe and i've became a little bit more familiar with it to where that's I mean, that's where i cut all my stuff myself i haven't made it big time yet to to be able to pay somebody to do all my editing but hopefully that'll come sometime sometime down the near future uh but if you're if you're good on adobe and you find someone that's good on adobe 
you can make a lot of money doing it because people don't want to mess with it. And like Ryan said, sometimes you get on for a few days, do it, might not get on it for another couple of weeks and you might forget how to, how to run some of the software on it. But yeah, if you do that, you make a lot of, a lot of money. But Ryan, I know you're, I know you're busy, man. I know you've got lots of things going on in your plate. I'm going to end a, in the show here with a, a segment I like to call the rapid fire questions. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I added my own little twist into the agency intelligence <laughs> side of things, keep the same format, but I'm going to throw my twist at the end of it here. So I've got, I've got four rapid fire questions for you. The fourth one being more of a uh, long longevity answer or a question that might, might get uh, some good feedback from our loyal listeners here and other agents. Uh, but to kind of start off, what's your favorite, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Uh, chocolate peanut butter, man. Chocolate peanut butter. I dig it. I dig the peanut butter part. I'm not a big chocolate fan, uh, but yeah. hey, you're not, you're not me. What's, uh, what's your, <laughs> what's your favorite color? Favorite color? Yes. Uh, favorite color. If you say green, I'm going to crap my pants. It is green, man, for sure. Dang, that's my favorite color. And it works well <laughs> with you guys with Goosehead being the, the, the green, I can tell. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So a little, little throw out clout for you or for some local restaurant. Might be a good, good piece, piece. Another question, another thing, guys, this would be a great piece of content for Ryan to share with his, with his, uh, his community and a way for him to reach out to some, uh, reach out to some people in his community. What's your favorite local restaurant around town where you live? So let's see here. We're probably still figuring it out. Um, I'd say in North Carolina, like Charlotte Lake Norman area, uh, favorite restaurant, fresh chef, fresh chef. Is that more of like just kind of, is it an Italian or is it more like home style type of deal? It's a kind of like a quick lunch and dinner, maybe not so much quick, but, um, they have the best kale salad I've ever had there, man. That sounds too, that sounds too vegetarian. Like for it's my pretty school. healthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really good. <laughs> Most uh, people are not fans of kale, but whatever fresh chef does, it's good. No, they have, I mean, they got salmon and all kinds of good, really good soups. So, so yeah, that, that would be it. Right on, right on. Well, last question here. And, and uh, I'll let you get back to, to writing all the insurance down in Florida. Um, for the young agents or for even any agent that might be getting started uh, or, or kind of trying to figure out maybe their career path of what they want to do. If you had one piece of advice for the agents out there in the world, what might that be? One piece of advice. That's a good one, man. Um, I think what comes to mind is the insurance industry has got an array of different things, right? I mean, we sell, Personally, I do home and auto insurance on the personal line side. You got commercial, you have life, you have health. Um, if you don't know what your niche is in any of those, you know, just keep trying it and finding it and, and learn from others at, at that point. You know, I, I'm a big fan on just because it says insurance in it, has the name insurance in it, doesn't mean I have to sell it. Um, you know, so we, we drive one lane and we drive it fast. Don't get too bogged down into trying to, to do everything. Um, you know, maybe find a niche or find something you like. I, I think that's the biggest thing. Find, find something you like. I'm not a life insurance salesman. I, I don't like selling life insurance. I don't, I don't keep up with health insurance enough. I don't want to sell that. Um, Mike C who's like, in my opinion, the health insurance guru, I send everybody to him because he, he knows that, like I know personal lines. Commercials, um, another one, I don't do enough of it just be, so I don't know it, you know, like the back of my hand. There's other people I partner with that, that that's all they do, you know? So, um, so yeah, find that niche market, keep trying them until you like it. I have a really good friend who loves life insurance. So, you know, everybody can kind of find their, their fit in the industry there. Good. Oh, great answer. Uh, I like that answer a lot. And you're right. I mean, uh, I don't touch the health life side either. Mine's all PNC. I, I'm primarily commercial. I'll write the personal if it comes, but um, the commercials, the commercials where I, I love, love to work, work on the most. And, and it does, it, 
it's very rewarding to, especially when you walk into a crappy situation where it might be workers comp or classifications continuous or continuously wrong in the last couple of years. And you're able to save them some money by just finding a dumb mistake that the other agent did not do correctly or did not do job, do his job the right way. I love those are the best. I mean, those, those are yeah. awesome. Another thing, Ryan here too, um, speaking of commercial business and we talk content real quick, I, I ADHD got off, got off my side. I'm sorry, Cass. I'm sorry. The, the agents, na agency nation agents influence podcast for, for continuing this, this this long long episode but it's a lot of good stuff and it just came to my mind but if you're trying to you think about strumming up leads for for content quick little tip might be fun something fun to do is whether it's yourself or other agents in your office colleagues principal owners once a week maybe it's your friday or maybe it's your your maybe it's a saturday or sunday that you put out a shout out post great way to acknowledge your local businesses out there, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a, you know, a roofing contractor or a uh, construction worker, excavation, excavating company, whatever it is. I think right now, big, and I'm going to start doing this with the people at our office. It's Friday. I'm sitting here with Julie Lucas, agent, you know, uh, agent in our office, do it, does this, this, and this is what she writes. We're going to see what her top five favorite restaurants eat or top five things going on around uh, Hancock County or whatever the county is this weekend or this week and let her rattle off four or five, maybe even prospects that she, she would like to get to know. Okay. Maybe it's that yeah. local ice cream shop or it's that local boutique. I love shopping at this boutique. Guess what? You turn that into a piece of social media post, you tag all five of those businesses in that post and follow up with them via message and say, I'd love to love, love for you to share this post if you would. What you just did there is you added value to that business. You threw them some clout or you threw them some, um, some authority to the community. And in return, that gets you a half a step in the door to go see them, go shop and have a conversation with that business, potentially to ask them for a chance to write or quote their insurance. Fun yeah. fact of the day. I'll leave it at that. Ryan, thanks again for joining the show, dude. You're an awesome individual. Uh, I'm Thank literally, you. I'm going to take away, take your, uh, your week's fun facts of the week or what'd you call it? The weekly. Oh, best, best part of our week. Best, best parts of the week. I'm going to start doing that. I love, I think that's so it's cool. It's fun, man. Do that. It, it's, it's awesome. I, I'm going to start doing that. I encourage you all to keep, keep trying to create pieces of content, have any questions, have any ideas. Don't hesitate, hesitate to reach out to uh, Ryan and I, you can find Ryan on social media, uh, Goosehead Insurance, look up Ryan Mahoney. It's it's easy to find. You'll pop right up. You'll see his beautiful family, beautiful little girls um, <laughs> in the green and uh, green, white, and black Goosehead Insurance uh, logo. So Ryan, keep doing what you're doing, man. You're an awesome leader in the insurance industry, and I, I commend you and thank you for taking your time to come on the show today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mitch. Hey, have a great afternoon, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Ryan Mahoney with Goosehead Insurance all the way down in Florida, enjoying the sunshine. Uh, loyal listeners, thanks for enjoying this show. Thanks for listening. We always appreciate it. Uh, don't ever hesitate to reach out with any questions, concerns you may have, or anybody that you think would be a great guest to have on the show. We'd love to have them on. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Mitch R. Gibson, HRM Insurance Services, and the Inside Hancock County Podcast. You can find Ryan Mahoney on Instagram, Facebook as well. Ryan Mahoney, Goosehead Insurance. This was the Agency Intelligence Podcast, and I thank each and every one of you for joining and listening today, and always remember that you can make a difference. Take care, everybody.